Do I even need to introduce this video, ladies and gentlemen? High ground retakes, you guys have asked for it in the comments so, so many times, and here I am with another video on the top high ground retakes you guys are gonna use in-game, in realistic 1v1s, and in playground 1v1s. My goal for today's video is to give you guys some insight on some 1v1 realistic high ground retakes that you guys can use in multiple scenarios. This means I'm not gonna teach you these fancy creative retakes that are not actually applicable in-game. I'm gonna show you the best, most concise retakes that you guys are gonna use in-game, and you guys are gonna thank me later for it. Before the video begins, we do have a little bit of housekeeping. One, I want you guys to make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this content. Over 90% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel just yet, so hopefully you guys can change that and help me out there a little bit. Leave a like on the video if you guys are excited for this kind of content, and leave a comment down below so you can answer the question of the day, which is, who do you think the best Fortnite player of all time is? For me personally, I would have to go with Dubs just because of how consistent he's been, but leave your comment down below and let me know your opinions. Also, a lot of you guys still ask about it. Yes, I do have a supporter credit code. It is code HINDOG in the item shop go ahead and help me out if you guys are planning on making a purchase with that said let's just get right into the video alrighty so for the first tip we're gonna be discussing the alternative method for achieving the double ramp so typically in the past or right now probably for a lot of you guys you might be doing double ramps by setting them up by doing either a thwifo cone where you place two walls and a cone which allows you to do the double ramp if you guys don't want to do that you would actually do a double edit where you would place a floor and a cone you would edit the floor horizontally sorry vertically and then you would edit the uh, cone horizontally and that would set up the double edit for you guys now that's great and all but i have an easier way for you guys to set up a double ramp and it works as such so say you're doing a single ramp rush on an opponent let's say that you can tell early on that they're actually going to get high ground off of you and there's no way that you're going to be able to take it back from them well you want to get into a defensive mode so you want to place one wall right here and then as you're turbo building this wall looking up slightly you want to actually pull out your ramp while you're turbo building which will instantly place it and then as you're running up i want you guys to make a four tile edit and then boom you only have to do one edit there instead of two with the double ramp now why is this particularly useful at all well there's actually a couple of reasons now first of all when you're doing high ground retakes well you're not going to be in a scenario where you're going to be able to do a th thwifo cone every single time uh, because if you're doing a thwifo cone that means you have to be looking away from your opponent when you're doing your ramp, and then you turn around, look towards your opponent, and do your Thwifo cone. So you have to have your back towards your opponent when you're ramp rushing. Well, let's talk about a scenario that happens commonly in a realistic 1v1 or an in-game scenario where you're ramp rushing your opponent. Let's say you're ramp rushing from this side, and your opponent is ramp rushing you from the other side, right? This happens so many, so many times in a game I can't even count because this is how most fights get initiated, guys. So if you guys are both ramp, ramp rushing one another, well, guess what? If he has height on you, well, how are you going to do a Thwifo cone? You, you're not going to look back and do a Thwifo cone to start the double ramp. Instead, what I want you guys to think about doing is floor, wall, ramp, and then go up from there. So that's going to give you that double ramp protection without having to look backwards. And once again, uh, I want to make this more accessible to everyone so that doing the double ramp from the front position is going to be a lot easier when you only have to do a single edit. So yeah, that's tip number one. Alrighty guys, so for tip number two, we're actually gonna build on that premise from the first tip. We're gonna be using a double ramp to actually initiate a right slide. And how that's gonna look is something like this. And in full motion. So yeah, something like that. Excuse me if I'm not the best creative builder in the world, by the way, guys, you know, that's not what I particularly do. I'm a competitive player, so <laughs> bear with me, guys. Now to break it down, basically what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna obviously start with the same configuration with the wall in front of you. Optionally, for more protection, you can place the ramp as if you're gonna be doing the double ramp, which will indicate to your opponent that you are trying to double ramp. And then what you wanna do is actually slide to the right. You could also slide to the left, but a much poorer view angle. You're gonna have to have like a much tighter margin of error. But the idea is that you're sliding off to the side, which is kind of an unpredictable move because they think that you're gonna be doing a double ramp forward, when in reality, you're sliding off to the right and you're building off of that. So definitely something you want to add to your rotation instead of going forward every single time you know you're making your edits and you're going through your edits well hopping over to the side is going to give you another layer of unpredictability and it's going to give you more opportunities to win your fights especially when you're fighting for the high ground so once again those are both tips that you guys are going to want to use if you are facing your opponent once again if you're going head to head against your opponent if your opponent's looking at you and you're looking at your opponent these are tips that aren't exactly always mentioned in these high ground retake videos but i thought i wanted to start the video off by talking to you guys about tips that happen when you're in this scenario very very common scenario at 
that. Alrighty guys, so moving on to tip number three, I actually want to talk to you guys about an improvement for the Thwifo cone. Once again, we talked about this earlier in the video where you turn around, place that wall and the cone consecutively to give you some more height separation from your opponent before again, once, once again, you turn around and do your high ground retake, just like you see here. But I think there's an improvement to that. And this is by popular demand. I want to talk about a specific tip that is mainly going to be utilized for you controller players out there. If you're on keyboard and mouse, you might want to skip a minute or two and head over to tip number four, because this one isn't uh, exactly something that can be utilized by a keyboard player. Now, what is the tip? Okay, so basically when you're doing your Thwifo cone, if you could see me on keyboard and mouse, the way I'm doing it is I'm looking forward, flicking to the right, placing my builds, and then flicking back to the left. I'm basically doing a bunch of 180s now that's completely fine but the thing is on controller there's a much smoother way to do it that's going to make it more consistent for you guys and that's to actually fully 360 every single time you do a swipe okay that means you turn around in a clockwise motion place your builds and then you continue moving in a clockwise motion so this is me doing it on a keyboard and mouse once again i'm not going to be able to do it perfectly because again i have to flick and then move my mouse every single time but when you're on a controller you have the analog sticks which as long as you're holding them down you can spin around at a consistent rate for an infinite amount of time um, so instead of having to jerk your analog stick to the left place your builds and then go back to the right every single time what you're basically doing is you're going to be holding down your analog stick the entire time to have a smooth build build etc that's the idea there i want you guys to make sure to be doing 360 degree thwifo cones when you're going for a high gun retake when you're not facing your opponent especially if you're on the controller input all right you guys so for the next tip tip number four i want to be discussing a tip that's going to actually once again be from the defensive side of a ramp retake where once again your opponent is looking at you and you have your back facing towards him so this technique actually uses a little bit of deception which is why i personally use this in my rotation at least semi often in a real game scenario so what i'm going to want you guys to do is start again from your double ramp scenario and i want you guys to cap off when you feel like you're high enough i want you to put a cone and a floor just like as you see here and then i want you to potentially edit and build to the left right or even forward the idea here is that you're placing builds that are reaching farther than where you currently stand but the idea here is that you're not actually going to edit through these builds as your opponent might expect so what you're going to do instead is you're going to turn around and grab this edit right here, this ramp, and I want you to turn it around as you see me doing right here. Edit as such, and put yourself in a really prime position. Because your opponent thinks that you're gonna follow through here, but if you quickly turn around and edit, make an opening for yourself, if he's left himself open, you're gonna have a free pump shot. If you hit your shot, then you instantly turn around and you start building up. Now, whether you wanna do a another double ramp and go up, that's up to you. Once again, you could also go around and do a side slide. What I like to do sometimes as well is before I do that side slide, I'll turn around, extend my builds out, basically kind of body block my opponent and then start doing 90s. It would look something like this once again. So yeah, just another iteration for you guys to consider when you're doing a high ground retake. You don't always have to follow through your builds that are closest to your crosshair. You can always turn it around, edit other pieces, and really put your opponent in a situation where he doesn't know where your next move is. Because if you're always editing through your cones and floors, well, guess what? He might just wait for you to pop that edit. And the moment you pop that edit, he's going to pop you really big. Uh, you don't want to give your opponent that luxury and allowing them to know what you're going to do next. Alrighty, guys. So for our fifth trick, I want to talk to you guys about a more advanced strategy that you can implement in your game if you feel like you're playing at the top competitive level. This one, I will warn you guys, is very, very difficult and it's still something sometimes hard for me to pull off so take that as a word of caution now the trick i want to show you guys revolves around the side jump which works where you place a cone on top of you and then you jump to the side so typically you'll actually want to get a floor and a ramp under you every single time you do this so side jump like such but then you're actually going to pair it with another mechanic where you do the same configuration but instead you place a cone and floor on top of you with this entire half box. And you're gonna to wanna to basically merge the two. So when you jump, you're gonna have this ramp in your box as well. Something like that, like that. So this is considered an infinite side jump, basically because you could do this an infinite amount of time. Now the way it works is that you're basically giving yourself enough time between each jump such that you're not actually gonna get jump fatigued. But keep in mind, look how vigorous my flicks are. Every single time I jump up, I place all of the walls. I place all of the walls right here. And then I look down, place the floor and the ramp. 
So this is not something that's very easy at all. And you guys are gonna have to practice this one a lot if you wanna be able to do multiple and chain them together with consistency. But if you do it like this, this is one of the most protective side jumps you could do in the entire world. And it's really, really fast at gaining elevation. So if you're looking head on at your opponent, and keep in mind, you could do this trick and you're fully protected for an infinite amount of time until your builds run out, basically. So definitely want to put this one in your playbook. Alrighty, guys. So I did say that I was only going to do five high ground retakes in this video, but I'm actually going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to give you a bonus six high ground retake that I think actually adds on to this retake that I showed you for number five. Basically, it's an easier way to do it with the same level of effectiveness, in my opinion. So we're going to show you how to get that one done. So what I want you guys to do is build the same exact configuration as the last high ground take where you put a floor cone above you just like as you see here and the only difference is instead of jumping and then doing your entire flicking maneuver where you place all your builds as such what I want you guys to do is edit a quarter tile on the left hand side as you see right here and I want you to look up they're almost directly up into the sky and I want you to place that left wall before you actually end up jumping so on your way up, it should look something like this. And you should be in this position here. Now your momentum is gonna allow you to swing the same way, but it's gonna be a much easier and less flicking jump when you already have this right wall created because the biggest part about this flick here is actually flicking all the way to this left wall to place it. So when you actually place that wall before you jump, you're almost not flicking at all. So once again, you're offering yourself the same level of protection that you would have with the previous jump, but this time, you're simply not putting yourself in as much uh, mechanical danger. If you don't feel comfortable doing the infinite, well, you could just do what I'm doing here. You could edit that quarter tile, get up there, and do exactly what you need to do. So there you guys have it. Those are six high ground retakes that I think you guys are gonna enjoy using in a real game scenario. And of course, if you did enjoy, which if you made it to this point in the video, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, then I would like if you guys left a like on the video. And once again, if you're not subscribed to the channel already, what are you guys doing? Go ahead and help me out. We just passed 5,000 subscribers not too long ago, and that made me so incredibly happy. So continuing to show me that support is gonna continue motivating me to bring content to you just like this. Alrighty guys, so with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.